regular attendees of Tuesday Funk know that this is the part of the program where I read a poem. Woo! Don't, seriously, don't apply just yet. Um, I wanted to write a science fictional poem for today, uh, and usually they're pretty short, but this is, this is like an, an epic science fiction poem. <laughs> And uh, seriously, the idea came to me while my wife Laura and I were at a Jay-Z concert in Austin at South by Southwest in March. And I was like, oh, can I do that? No, I can't do that. Oh, today I did it. And uh, we'll see how this goes. This poem is called Grand Motherfucker. <laughs> it was the early 23rd, and I was just the latest turd of a miner to get dumped on Harkin's moon. I had finished my first shift and took the slow repulsor lift up to a weightless bar called Betsy's Grand Saloon. We were sipping bulbs of beer in artificial atmosphere and watching servers flit around that hollow space. My hair still caked with sand. I said, the place, it sure was grand. And my new buddies smirked and pointed across the place. You see that mope sitting alone like some sad king up on his throne? They said, that bastard is the grandest of the grand. And if you go and ask him why, and make it back, well, then we'll buy your drinks all night, and we'll know you're a real man. But they said, they said you have to ask him, sucker, how he ever got to be such a grand motherfucker. <laughs> and then they shoved me in the chest, and I was drifting past the rest of all the patrons, and the place grew deathly silent. And I could only stop my flight by grabbing on and holding tight to that guy's table, and the look he gave was violent. While I was barely hanging on, my heart was banging like a gong, and that guy said, You got a question? Well, then ask it. Before those hundred pairs of eyes, I had no witty quick replies. And though I knew it just might mean an early casket, I said, Sir, I don't mean to push my luck, uh, but how'd you get to be such a grand motherfucker? <laughs> the whole bar's sharp intake of breath was like a harbinger of death, and I was ready for that mope to grab his blaster. And those eyes were filled with rage. I saw the clues to his true age, the biomods that smoothed his skin to alabaster. He said, no one has asked in years, which makes you braver than your peers. He raised a jeweled fist, as if to call my bluff. What can you tell about this ring? It was a massive, gleaming thing. I said, that's rhodium? I only mine this stuff. He snapped his fingers, called for drinks, amidst the hubbub and the clinks of glassware. Flunkies velcroed me into a chair. And he took his sad Manhattan from a server clad in satin and said, I'm the one who pays for all this hair. So if you came here for a kiss, it's time to pucker. Because this is how I got to be the grand motherfucker. And this is what he said. He said, It was the mid-22nd, I was second in my class, PhD in physics just within my grasp, trying to unravel time travel, testing theories in my lab, could I grab all the glory, Nobel Prize? Built a model down to size, miniaturized, fusion powered on my finger at the zero hour, fired up the power. Blinding flash, brink my eyes, where was I? found a paper, and I found in my surprise it was the late 21st. I was the first to jump through time, but the bubble shortly burst. I pressed the button on my ring to go back. Not a thing. All alone, stranded 60 years from home. How to get back, back on track, hack a pack passage to the future, stitch a suture in the space-time fabric. Found my way to my old college, newer now, seeking knowledge from the sages of the time. Showed up during office hours of a prof named Dr. Powers, Told my tale that his assistant was insistent that she listen, saw her eyes glisten. Frissin' of familiarity came over me, there and gone. She was on the intercom, she shook her head. She said, Professor regrets he can't see you, but I'm Betsy. I'm on my way to lunch, but I have a hunch, a bunch of stuff I know could help, if you let me. So we talked. Physics. <laughs> Noon turned to evening, thoughts of leaving, leaving fled. 21st century's not so dead, I was thinking in my head, but Betsy was believing in my story. Took the ring apart in her lab, put it back together with some parts from inventory. She touched my hand, said, let's test it in the morning. And she took me home, but not to sleep. 
What more is there to tell? Hurt like hell to say goodbye, but it worked. Well, the ring, she really was a genius. Safe but aching back at home. 22nd, my time, my apartment. Walked in, I saw the photos on the wall. There was my mother as a small girl. A photo I had seen all my life. Like a knife, stabbing, shook my head. My hands were grabbing at the frame. One name on my tongue, cause holding my mom's hand was my brilliant Betsy. Have you got the point yet? <laughs> but I've known her best as Liz, see? Grandma Liz, I grew dizzy. And it hit me like a mountain, like a fountain of my DNA, circling recursively through time, cursed strands that recombined in a loop I can't escape. No extraction, and it's real, it's no abstraction. I'm a grandmother fucker. <laughs> bar was deathly still. <laughs> there were still some gaps to fill, like how he traded patents for this lonely moon. And all the rhodium we mined to fuel forays back in time went to the government. What they did, no one knew. He said, I'll never leave this place because I can never show my face on the rock of my conception and my birth. In, the five years, in five years, your contract expires and you'll head home to the spires of the place I'll never see again, the earth. And he waved his jeweled hand just a bitter, broken man, and my pals, they dragged me off to buy some tail. But the girls in the brothels wore, all wore 21st century costumes, and I realized this moon was just a jail, where inmates trapped without the hope of sucker in the prison that's the mind of the grand mother fucker. <laughs> Guest. <laughs> Poor bastard. <laughs> Sorry, Ray. 